Okay, today I'm going to review my IDEAC launch and this is the, connect this, the connection kit that I had a great hard deal to get a hold of this connection kit. Here's the tool. That's what it looks like. It is connecting with Android with my mobile phone which is in Nexus 5. I will show you in a minute. I've already got it hooked up here on this car which is a Toyota 1995 model. The connector kit hooks to battery 12 volt plus for the OBD2 which feeds in here and it's connecting to the old style Toyota plug. So now we're going to connect this in here and you can see it's powered on. It's on this Toyota, hang on, with engine 4E-FE, so it's a real old school, heavy duty, never gonna fail, sort of style engine, but it hasn't failed, it's had lots of abuse, I would guess. There's no leaks, so I'm looking after it. It's got 320,000. There's no airbags. It's a three speed rugged transmission from Aizin. Now This is my phone, Nexus 5. Android. IDEAC from launch. Now, a few explanations to this. You get here Free EOBD, that's what you get with the program. Now, this EOBD, it's completely and absolutely useless on these launch tools. You don't get any information whatsoever via EOBD. But, it's pretty reasonable for quite some makes like Toyota. I've had bi-directional control for Holdens which is Opel which is in here Europe I've had quite good success of what I can actually do on Dacia not so good with Benz it can do quite a lot but it can't do enough to my liking but we need Asians now and I'll show you the Toyota because it's it's very very good on Toyota So I have to turn it on. Connecting and paired. Now we get 48.3 version of Toyota. Connecting. Now we have 22 pin DLC here. Now this thing Engine, SRS, airbag and ABS is what it's, what it's giving us. The thing is, this hasn't got ABS, it also has no airbags. As you can see here, there is no airbag, so we don't even want to bother to go in there because there will be nothing in there. So engine, 
please connect blah 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 we already done that now we have DTC information now of course a DTC we shall read it out please wait this is all real time the video won't be edited because I don't know how haha <laughs> We have data stream 1, value 14, so we have a code here. We have another one, 31. So now we have two codes, I only know of one. <laughs> so, ignition circuit, ignition system fault. Hmm, I know that one because I caused it, which is 31. However, I have tried to start the vehicle while the sensor was unplugged. And since we don't really have a drivability issue with ignition on this vehicle, we just can basically ignore it and, and clear the code. Remove battery, 30 seconds. So this tells us to clear these codes we must remove the battery minus or main fuse on the ECU for 30 seconds. Okay. So we might do that but not in this video. So we go data list. Now here we have two ones just showing you a different version of of the same thing like we have here engine speed zero injector pulse width is 24 27.4 millisecond idle control zero steps airflow is 0.0, .0 volts intake manifold pressure is 17 run and um, left air fuel, right air fuel, throttle opening, ignition advance is 10 degrees, vehicle speed is zero, coolant temperature sensor is 3 volts. Now, O2 sensor lean and the, the fueling is open loop. NOx sensor is no, starter switch is off, Idle switch is on, AC clutch is off, park neutral switch, we don't know because it's warm start enrichment, yes, enrichment after starting, yes. The thing is we want to get out of this one and go into the other one because we have like coolant temperature is telling us 3 volts. This doesn't tell us very much, we rather have the one that tells us how many degrees it is. So we go back and choose the other one. Now we have coolant temperature 19 degrees. I can show you something with the AC. Ignition, coolant, open loop, idle switch is on, park neutral switch. Closed loop here, or oh, open loop. This is the fueling. It will always be in open loop because this car hasn't had a working oxygen sensor since at least 15 or more years, I would guess. And we have here park neutral switch. Now I'm going to switch 
into reverse. You can see it's changed to RD. I'm going to go into low. It stays into RD because it's the park neutral switch. I go back to park and it's going to park. This tells me the computer knows that the park neutral switch is functioning. Warm start after enrichment. That this is because the engine is cold as per the 19 degrees of the coolant. So we shall graph a few things here. We're going to get engine speed, injection pulse, and this is a good one as well, idle air stepper. Now I had to fix the uh, carbon buildup on the idle air control because it was idling way too low after 324,000 kilometers. And I'll show you what, what it will do. If we fire it up, you should see what the idle stepper starts doing. It moved it to 150 steps at 1075 RPM. The injection pulse is 3.3 milliseconds. The airflow is 0.8 volts. Now watch what the idle controller is doing. After a while, I let it idle. We'll come back to what you can already see what it's doing. It's clocking it down, 128 steps, 127, 126 steps. So the warmer the engine is getting, the lower the stepper motor goes to bring down the idle. I can see this all from this diagnostic software for this old Toyota from launch. And it's why I'm saying it's pretty good for for what it is on these older Toyotas. I've had it plugged in on one of the older Mazdas with the same connector thing and it comes up no communication. So either there's something not kosher with that master which could very well be or the software is just not capable of doing anything with, with that system. Now that's another problem that you sometimes get. We just lost communication with the data stream. So you have to log back in, it's no biggie. But it can happen and it can be annoying. So, there's nothing more for this old Toyota. On newer Toyotas you can do a hell of a lot more by just the OBD plug. I'll have to log in again. Data list. I think it was the lower one. Vehicle speed zero. Coolant temperature is now 37. Knock sensor no. Idle switch on. I'll show you what's going to happen there. See it goes off as soon as I move the throttle. We have AC clutch off. That's another feature. If you press your AC button here, we know now it's still not on because it's not blowing. Now the AC is on. You can hear that the engine's idling higher, and we can also see it here. It says AC clutch on. I turn it off now. It's now off. Idle switch on. Oh, I have to keep it a bit. 
and we lost of course communication again very annoying but it's just what you have to put up with it's not perfect it gives you a great deal of um, possible ways of doing things and may have to try another software which is a lower grade because there's new softwares coming out and some of them is not as good as the, as the new one and some of them is completely taking away features so you never know where you are and that's the next problem that we're having with launch support wise there is absolutely no support whatsoever for launch you're on your own if you need something you're gonna have to try and try and try and and hope for the best that you find someone who is who is able to help you out like I've purchased just a few days ago the Fiat and Volkswagen software uh, contacted launch because there was an error on the system to download my money is gone and I didn't get anything so I had to launch now a dispute to get my money back from PayPal which I should be hopefully getting back so I can try again because yes we really want to quit it is a good tool for what it is but I wouldn't want to buy a $3,000 version of them for what poor support that exists because if I spend three grand on a tool and then there's poor support like this I'm not willing to spend three grand on this I'm looking for a better tool like I'm having the uh, Rostec for Volkswagen there's absolutely best support ever best tool for Volkswagen and it's why you get what you pay for in this case you set you get a bit more than you pay for and you get a bit less in support than you actually pay for so yeah but that's how it is we can't change it this diagnostics kit I've managed to get from a guy and he has contact directly to launch so it's not a pirated version and it's okay I'm happy what I get out of this Toyota I have to check whatever else like old forts I'll be quite happy if I get some good stuff out of the old forts I don't know if I will here's the old Volkswagen here is the um, I believe this is the old Merck I'm not happy what I'm getting just from normal OBD with the Merck software but yep I have to take it as it is okay thank you